Hey guys, so today I'm out here trying to zero in this bad member jamber rot her the Christensen Arms uh, 338 Lapua. It's their MPR modern precision rifle. Um, I wish it was a heavier. <laughs> Damn, she kicks. Um, I'm just using some uh, some HSM right now for a barrel break-in. I've put 10 rounds down it so far. No, nine. Nine rounds. And every third round, I pull the bolt and I do a quick clean. So with the quick cleaning, I'm using a bore guide and a nice rod and then I'm using I've uh, doubled up doubled up the patches for that 338 bore um, and then I'm just using I've never tried it before this breakthrough brand but a copper remover what I use first and then I use this uh, just like a general purpose solvent so I'll run the copper remover through and then afterwards I'll spray it down with this and run that through twice um, and that's just going to help clean up any residue left in the bore uh, from firing it and that's a good good way to do a barrel breaking whether it's a pencil barrel carbon fiber wrap like this is it's not necessarily a pencil barrel uh, these are a little bit thicker than most of Christensen's barrels but it's still carbon fiber wrapped and you want to be careful with that. You don't want to be overheating it. So again, three rounds, I wait at least a minute or two in between each round and then fire that third round and then I clean it and then I let it sit for about 15 minutes in the shade um, to let that barrel fully cool down. I'm also trying to zero in this scope. This is a Vortex Razor. Um, it's their, what is it? Sorry. I should know this. It's a six through 36 by 56. A lot of sixes. Um, it's like their, their, their top end. Um, and then I got Christensen rings on there, a little bubble level. It's a 34 millimeter lens, or sorry, uh, 34 millimeter tube. It's an awesome scope. I really like it. Um, but I, I'm not that great at zeroing in rifles. Um, I did my best for sighting it. <clears throat> I've already had to adjust quite a bit to uh, bring the round to the left because it's hitting right. I did hit, I've got two targets, one at 100 and one at 430. And I hit that 431 dead on, uh, but I was holding low, but center. Um, <clears throat> so, and, and this scope, I'm still trying to figure it out. I can't go. I'd have to take the cap off to actually bring it up. So honestly, if I'm holding low at 430, that's okay. Cause I want this rifle to be able to hit thousand plus. And so averaging where I'm holding right now, I'm holding low at 430. So that means uh, dead center, I should be around 800. I'm just guessing here. Someone who knows more about it, please chime in. Hell yeah, brother. Oh, it's such a good feeling. Looks like... We hit her low left on the silhouette. Left. We do have a high wind from right to left, so that could be possible. 430 yards isn't really going to affect the 338 round, but I'm sure it does a little bit. So I'm going to let that barrel sit just for a minute. Um, it really is crucial not to let your barrel overheat during a break-in process, guys. 
I know it gets exciting, especially when you actually hit something, but uh, you just got to be careful. You don't want to be uh, you don't want to be mag dumping, <laughs> especially with 338 Lapua at uh, what five six bucks around. I uh, I don't make that kind of money. <laughs> Plus, again, it's just not good for the barrel. So a couple cool things about this Christensen Arms is that it does have a really effective muzzle brake on it. So that muzzle brake is actually tunable. It's got four ports with uh, hex keys up top. So I could actually pull one or four off of there to help eliminate some of that kick. Um, and again, that brake is super effective at, at pulling the rifle forward while the recoil pushes it back. Uh, so for how lightweight of a gun it is, the, the recoil is really not that bad. Uh, 338 Lapua, I mean, that's a, that's a big round. So it's, I think it's pretty effective. 250 grain. Anybody wants brass, you can buy it from me. It's a pretty cool spot I found. Uh, I'm way towards, actually, you know what? I'm not going to tell you where I am, but is that a fly on my lens? Oh, hell no, nah, dog. Get out of here. Well, it's a cool area except for the bugs, man. I was down by the lake earlier and it was bad. I had like skeeters all up in my grill. So I was like, I need to get to higher ground. So I came up here. Um, where the target is, uh, my silhouette, it's not the best spot. I, I would prefer to have like a, a blank canvas behind it, like a nice dirt hill right behind it, but I just couldn't find anywhere that didn't have grass. And uh, I just wanted to be careful of fire hazards. So, you know, I've got my water jugs here, got my truck ready to go in case I do see a spark, I can zoom over there. But again, I, I put this, the steel target in the road and there's nobody, you know, the, the road is dead end that way. So nobody can come this way without passing me first. So trying to be as safe as possible but I'm also in the middle of nowhere. Like, <laughs> it would be really weird to see someone out here because I am way the hell out here, which is awesome. I love it. I don't think my dog likes it. Brought her plenty of water, but all right. Three minutes, I think that's good enough for the barrel. Make sure we got a good angle on the camera still. Yeah, buddy. mass more towards top left shoulder that's awesome all right get this last one done before the dog comes back <coughs> where I'm holding is um, the hashtag hash, hash mark uh, Look guys, I don't know all the code words for cool scope lingo, so just bear with me here. But you got your center uh, of the crosshairs. So I'm holding up top on the eight, hash mark eight, um, eight MOA. So I'm, I don't really know what that means, guys. I'm so novice on this shit. Um, so hopefully someone can be like, hey, you dummy. Uh, this means that <laughs> so chime in but that was awesome so we got one round left let it cool for a minute um, and then I'll clean it I don't know if I'm gonna shoot any more of this with it being so expensive I kind of want uh, someone here with my spot I have a spotting scope but I'm here all by my lonesome my dog doesn't really care to do the spotting, so she's out 
wandering around finally. Um, so I might save the other rounds I've got until I can get someone else down here with me and uh, go out a little bit further, you know? I mean, 430 yards ain't nothing for a 338, so it'd be cool to take a little bit further. But after this last round, I'll, uh, you know, we'll head down there and show you what we've been hitting. I'll probably drive. I already walked that once. My dog was not down with that. I thought she was going to fucking croak. Oh, man. Three hits at the 338. Not bad. Last round miss. Didn't feel very confident when I sent it either. It looked like it hit just to the left. I think elevation was good, but windage was not. Stock over to the left, the right, whatever. Oh, that handle is hot. Put a copper remover on there. Some bore guide in. Bore guides are nice. They're cheap. Effective. Now are kind of a pain in the ass, but I recommend forty-two to somebody. <laughs> All right. So, if you guys have ever done a barrel break-in before, especially on a Christensen, it'd be awesome to hear what you have to say about it or what kind of procedures you took and if they are similar to what I'm doing here today. I would be curious to know. So let me know guys. Let me know. And if any of y'all have some good tips on Getting rid of flies, no. um, zeroing in scopes and any of that stuff. Uh, let me know. If you're in the uh, Utah area and you're really good at it, you should go out shooting. I'll let you shoot one round. All right, guys. Appreciate y'all tuning in for this one. See you on the next one.